there's a giant question that we need to be asking our new cultural overlords. What is that question, you wonder? Well, stick around. Welcome back to Scola Fides. My name is Hutch, and today we're going to be looking at two news articles. The first is this one from BuzzFeed News about the ouster of Planned Parenthood's most recent president. Here is the headline. Planned Parenthood has ousted its president, Leanna Wynn, amid a dispute over the organization's direction. Wynn had worked to emphasize the group's status as a health care provider, leading to concerns among some staff that the organization was moving away from politics. This article is by Emma O'Connor and Ruby Kramer, and it was last updated at 6.41 p.m. on July 16th. Now on to the body of the article. Planned Parenthood president Leanna Wynn, the first physician to head the women's health care group in 50 years, said she was removed from her position by the organization's board, quote, at a secret meeting, end quote, capping months of internal concerns over her management style and a perceived shift away from the group's political work. Wynn attributed her departure to philosophical differences over the direction and future of Planned Parenthood, she said in a tweet on Tuesday. She was in the position for less than a year. I believe that the best way to protect abortion care is to be clear that it is not a political issue, but a health care one, Wynn wrote in a statement about her sudden termination. Well, that's uh, an interesting take on things. First and foremost, the insistence that this is a uh, issue that is not political, but that is merely a question of health care. The one questions how health care can involve, I don't know, taking the life of another human being. But let's look a little bit more at this article. There are some important statements there to be found a little bit deeper down in the story. We see this. First, as senior political staffers began to depart the organization early this year, Planned Parenthood employees, board members, and supporters were quick to express concern that when planned to emphasize the group's status as a health care provider, shifting away from the political focus Richards instilled during her 10 years as president. You see, at least someone at Planned Parenthood is being honest that Planned Parenthood isn't all about health care, that Planned Parenthood is all about abortion and all about politics. And so the idea that Planned Parenthood is this apolitical organization that's out there that's just concerned about women's health couldn't be further from the truth. And then there's a little bit more. We see here as well that under Wynn's short tenure, Planned Parenthood's fundraising saw a significant decline without Richards at the helm. So not only was this uh, shift in focus away from the political to the healthcare side of things controversial within the organization itself, it was also controversial amongst the donors. You see, this change in focusing on healthcare was also hitting them in the pocketbook. But here, I think, is one of the most important statements that's buried in this article from BuzzFeed News. Two sources told BuzzFeed News that Wynn also refused to use trans-inclusive language. For example, saying people instead of women and telling staff that she believed talking about transgender issues would, quote, isolate people in the Midwest, end quote. You see, I think that may be the most important statement in the whole article, that part of what fed this firing was the fact that Wynn refused to use trans-inclusive language, which should cause us to have a very real question that we need to start asking and asking loudly of our new culturally elite overlords, and that is this. Just how woke is woke enough? You see, there is this meme that progressives eventually are forced to eat their own, and I think that we see that happening here with the firing of Dr. Wynn. You see, if somebody is a doctor and they get fired over refusing to use trans-inclusive language, one should have a number of questions. First being, if somebody has XY chromosomes and the corresponding genitalia that goes with those chromosomes, then is it improper to call them a man and to, well, say truthfully that it's the height of insanity to call them anything else? 
You see, this is an area where Christians can expect growing hostility from our new cultural overlords. You see, it's not just anymore that, you know, our cultural differences are going to be seen in marriage, in the relationship between husband and wife, or even in the question of who may get married as one man and one woman, as we see in Scripture, but now it's going to be over the question of trans inclusivity. And I would argue that the next big fight that's on the horizon for Christians in the United States and in the West more broadly is going to be the question of plural marriage, although we're not there quite yet. But speaking of controlling bodies, which is how abortion is usually, um, sh is usually framed in the uh, liberal uh, news outlets that are you know, in the mainstream, I want to look at this article from Metro UK. The headline reads, Student Creates Chair to Put an End to Man Spreading. This is by Ellen Scott, and it was written on Thursday, the 18th of July of 2019. The article reads, Manspreading is deeply annoying, but for all of us irritated women on public transport, it's felt like the only way to tackle this maddening act is through deep sighs and passive-aggressive leg nudges. But no more. A student has come up with a proper solution to put an end to manspreading forever. Layla Laurel, 23, is a student at the University of Brighton, and she's just won the Belmond Award at New Designs in London for her creation, a chair that trains men to stop manspreading. Layla's also made a chair to encourage women to take up more space. Here's how the chairs work. The anti-manspreading chair has legs that narrow in width, forcing the sitter's legs to press into each other. The women's chair does the opposite, forcing their legs to be spread widely. Now, this is an interesting article on a number of fronts. Now, there's more to the article, and if you want to read it, feel free to go do so. I'll include the link in the description of the video below. But what I find so interesting here is the obvious double standard. You see, if a male student dared to invent a piece of furniture that forced a woman to do anything at all, he would be immediately tarred, feathered, and then run out of town on a rail. It's interesting, though, to me that women will protest that men have no right to tell them what to do with their own bodies, especially when it comes to ending the life of their child in utero, and yet they presume to tell men how to sit. And given the frequent smear that conservative men want to control women's bodies, it's more than a little ironic that now there's a woman who has produced a piece of furniture that is designed to control men's bodies. You see, the double standard is obvious. And if it's sauce for the goose, then it's sauce for the gander as well. And so, if it's wrong for conservative Christians or for men to control women's bodies, as it is argued, again, in the media, then it should be wrong for a woman to produce a piece of furniture that is designed to control a man's body. Now, obviously, and as we see here uh, a little bit later in the article, we find that the, um, pardon me, that the chair is made from sycamore and cherry wood. It looks visually pleasing. And later down, we find this, that the chairs are a concept design that are created to get a conversation going about how men and women take up space in the world. And so these chairs aren't actually going to be used. You're not going to suddenly find them in your local doctor's office. But yet again, this does come back to the issue of the differences between men and women. And they're the differences that we see designed in men and women from the very moment of creation. Chairs like this and the complaints over manspreading have to ignore the fact that men and women's hips are shaped very differently. And that the shape of, the man's, of a man's hips basically forces the knees to open wider while in the sitting position. Which is to say nothing of the fact that men have different appendages than women do, and sitting with our thighs close together has a tendency to uh, cramp some rather important male parts. But let's ignore all of the other problems that women are focused on in the world, and let's zero in on manspreading, because that's the real fight that needs to be had. 
folks, I think that we are rapidly reaching peak wokeness. But I could be wrong, and to be perfectly fair, I probably am. Well, thank you so much for tuning back in for another day's video. God bless you, and have a great afternoon. Hey guys, thank you all so much for sticking around for the end of the video. If you're being helped by the content that I'm producing here, please subscribe to the channel. That way you can get updates when new content is available. If you've enjoyed this particular video, please give it a like. And if you have thoughts of your own, leave them in the comment section below. I'd love to talk to you about it. God bless.